Hi, I'm Shadi. And hello, my name is Lydia, and we are here today to speak about Are You Okay Day. But first, before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that we are making this video on the land of the Kulin Nations. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Boonarong, Boonarong, why we wrong? Aboriginal land. Don't know the wrong and way we rule. Aboriginal land. Near yellow, why wrong? Aboriginal land. Judge of It's okay to ask. If you're okay. Lydia, I've just got a question for you, just so we can get started. Mm -hmm. What does Are You Okay Day mean to you? Are You Okay Day is an annual day, um, the 10th of September, I believe it is, each year, that we um, reinforce a culture, basically, to ask people, are you okay? So it's not that we choose this day to ask people, are you okay? And then we move on to the 11th and just keep going with our lives. It's, it's just reinforcing a culture that we should practice this every single day. Yeah, we should be, yeah, we should be asking each other every single day, keeping up with uh, those around us, those close to us. But even more so, probably the people that are a little bit more distant that might need that extra little bit of support to know that you're out there caring for them, knowing that you're still thinking of them, that you're still loving them, even though you may not speak every day, but mm -hmm. you're still there. And knowing that they, they can um, rely on you as a support. That's right. Yeah, and as per the website, it does say it's a national day of action, they say, where we remind Australians that every day is the day to ask. Are you okay? As you know, there are a lot of different ways that, um, you know, a lot of different things that we can use to serve our mental health and well-being. And I think one of those um, ones, which, are, which is a really powerful one, is the arts. Um, and given you're a DJ, I wanted to ask, do you use that as a way to serve your mental health and well-being in any, in any way? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I've been DJing for almost 10 years now, and I always see that uh, DJing and music is an escape for me. So whenever I get to be, be a DJ, get in my zone, it's really just a clear headspace for me. It's a way yeah. to get away, but it's a way to also express my feelings. And I've got the opportunity to play whatever genre I like. Yeah, so, you know, sure. if, I'm feeling, if I'm feeling down, you know, I, could, I get to play music that relates to me. If I'm feeling happy and energized, I get to play music that also relates to me. Mm. Um, so that's been, that's been uh, really good for me. What about yourself, Lydia? I know that you're into a little bit of arts and a little bit of, um, yeah. you know, you're changing it up these changing it up these days. So tell me a little bit about how it helps with you. I think that the arts in general is something that I'd like definitely lean on a lot. Um, for one, I would say drawing is really therapeutic for me. So just like picking up a pencil or like a pen and just scribbling, I find that I like... I get so immersed into that zone that I do forget about what else is going around me. And it's a really therapeutic moment. Um, yeah. But on top of that, dancing, dancing is definitely my thing. So like when I'm working on assignments, I literally would stop at like the one hour mark and just like put my earphones in, play a song and just dance in front of the mirror and just like go for it. And then I'll just go back to the desk for another hour. So like, yeah, all of these things are like, it's like letting, energy out it's escaping um it's relating like you say um so yeah i do believe that the arts is a really powerful way to um, serve as a preventative measure but also a treatment for mental health and well-being all right and now we're going to hear from the melton dream big artist team yes um we're going to show some of their work to you guys and then we're briefly going to hear them speak about how they use their art to keep them buoyant and happy
Hey there, my name is Felipe. I've been a percussionist for over 20 years. And some of the things that you can benefit from being a percussionist or musician, something that you can do basically for your whole life without getting bored, always trying to find something new and improving something in your playing. The other thing that's fun and you can benefit from music is some of the experiences you have, you travel, make some money, opportunities. Hopefully we'll be back at lunchtime there at your school. I will be running that percussion class. And if you want, come and say hello and maybe have a play. Thanks. Hey. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Nice mask. Yeah, thanks. How are you feeling under that though? Mm. Well, to be honest, I'm feeling pretty flat. Like, Every day is becoming the same. I'm pretty sick of this. Yeah. You know it's okay not to be okay. This will end. Yeah, I know. It's still hard right now. Yeah. Well, how about we just put some music on and hoop? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Stranger to the dark Hide away, they say Cause we don't want your broken parts I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars Run away, they say No one will love you as you are But I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are the Wanna cut me down I'm gonna send a blood Gonna drown a mind I am brave I am bruised I am who I'm meant to be This is me Look out cause here I come And I'm marching on to the beat I drum I'm not scared to be seen I make no apologies This is me circus trainer with Dream League. The arts has always helped me to get through tough times. For me, circus has been a way that I can express myself, learn skills I never thought I could, and it helps clear my head. It's weird times at the moment, I know, and we've had to find new ways to connect. If circus is the kind of thing that you'd like to try, we've got a virtual circus club that happens on a Friday, and you can find more details on our website. But in the meantime, get creative, connect with the people you care about, Check in with them, check in with yourself, and don't be afraid to ask for help. And we will get through this. Hello for lover everyone, my name is Faustina Ma'ai, and today I wanted to teach you two Samoan words. The first Samoan word is Tsalanoa. Now when you translate this word into English, it becomes to speak or to talk. Now today being are you okay day i wanted to heavily emphasize on the importance of speaking up when you are going through trials and tribulations that heavily weigh down your mental there is a great sense of healing when you learn to speak about what you are going through to a good friend of yours i think once you learn to talk about dissect and speak up about the problems that you have 
you find solutions that readily help your growth. And the second word today I wanted to teach you is fa'along. Now when you translate this word into English, it becomes to listen. Now, as important as it is to talk up and speak up about what you are feeling inside, it is also very crucial that you are a friend that can lend an ear to another when it is greatly needed. Now, it's so easy to, you know, um, go off and start talking about yourself, but every now and then, I think it's absolutely crucial to, you know, also be a friend that can just sit there and listen to someone else who's expressing themselves to you. Now, before I head off, I just wanted to quickly leave you with a song. Um, it is written by Bob Marley. It's an OG tune. Um, and I just, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Don't worry about anything Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Singing don't worry about So our next guest is Luke and he's from Headspace in Melton. Headspace is a youth organisation that works with young people aged from 12 to 25 years old, as well as their families and their friends. Headspace covers um, many things such as mental wellness, physical health, alcohol and other drugs, and educational and vocational support. They also provide a holistic approach to wellbeing. So Luke from Headspace, he works as a community awareness officer at Headspace and he's heavily present in the community, facilitating workshops, um, presentations, and he even works on different projects and facilitates youth participation in the Melton area. Hi Luke, welcome today. Thank you for coming on board. How are you? Hi Lee and Shadi, thank you for having me. I'm doing good, thank you. Yeah, Luke, uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us today. But um, a more important question is, why have you decided to join us today on our show? Yeah, so with community awareness, a large part of my role is being out and about in the community, as Lee has said. I guess with Are You OK Day coming up, would usually be in face, doing face-to-face -face stuff with kids during their lunchtime or during a period during the school day for Are You OK Day. I guess with COVID-19 happening, um, obviously we're working from home. We felt it was pretty important to still have those discussions and having some type of engagement around, are you okay today? Um, and I guess just remind everyone that obviously, are you okay today is one day to kind of, and to kind of take away the conversation, the skills that we're going to talk about today to implement every day. Um, they're going when working from home or learning from home as well. So what to say to your mates, how to approach the situation and what to do if they're not, if they say they're not doing okay. Yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, and I think I love how you touched on the fact that despite the fact COVID is happening right now and we have um, inevitable restrictions around how we can communicate, um, that Headspace is still working on ways that we can keep up um, this movement because it's, it's definitely important. And um, so that's my next question would be, uh, what are some signs um, that you guys have recognised um, are appropriate signs to deem that someone might not be doing too well? I think um, one that might be pretty frequent today, if someone seems a bit withdrawn or not themselves. So just for example, if you're regularly chatting to them on Messenger, Facebook, Instagram, or any app, or even via text, and I guess they're not responding as they normally would, or the answers are quite short, and I guess distance and not direct. Um, other examples might be, if you know they're going for a rough time, so they might be having problems at home with their family, might be having relationship problems, school might be doing extra tough at the moment. Um, I think you're just going about your relationship, thinking about what's happening in their own personal lives and how they're acting. If they're not themselves, they might be agitated or um, even the way, 
even the way they're acting when you do talk to them or the things they're saying, they might not seem like themselves. So picking up a little signs of what they're doing, what's going on in their lives and what they're saying as well. Yeah, it's, I think it, it's more about just not looking at the surface anymore just to really be attentive to your mates around you. Is that what you're trying to say? No, exactly right. Perfect. And probably, probably a really hard question for a lot of us to understand is how do you actually ask, are you okay? Yeah, that's a great one. And I think um, the most important thing to do is be, be prepared. So think about how you're going to ask the question. So it might not necessarily be saying directly, are you okay? It might be asking in a way that you usually ask me like, how have things been? How, how are you going? What's new? And I guess um, in saying that, reflecting on like, if you're going to have that conversation with your mates, how would you want to be asked as well? And just keep it as natural as, pos- natural as possible. Um, I think when the question's out there, I think that's the hardest part. And following up in, saying, in asking, are you okay, is um, judging a response. So you obviously know if they want to talk, taking that time to really be prepared and listen, not just saying, are you okay, and being like, oh, I asked them, I've done my job. Actually taking the time, listen attentively, paying attention, nodding, repeating what they're saying back to them. Just, I guess, to show that you're listening, show that you're trying to understand from their perspective and, I guess, in their own perspective as well, um, so that words that they're saying make sense to them as well. And I guess um, next step in asking how you're okay is, I guess, if they're not okay is, encouraging action and I think um, so following up from asking are you okay is asking what they might want to do next so follow up might be suggesting something that's helped you in the past or having a think in their own personal lives hey I realize you're going through this tough time what are the things that you're doing or what are some things that you might do that might help in the current situation um, another, another situa- might, situation might be if you know that there's other mates or other family members who might have noticed similar things, reaching out to them. So either um, suggesting to that person that they reach out to these particular people or maybe supporting that person by going and talking like, hey, my mate's not going for a good time at the moment. Can we get your help? We bit stuff on where to go next, that type of thing. Um, I guess, yeah, just... Another important thing to note is that you don't have to fix the problem in terms of asking, are you okay? And I think that's where a lot of the burden comes from as well. So an example might be asking after asking, are you okay? It's like, what can I do for you? Um, what do you need right now? And in asking, okay, when giving the response, um, don't judge their own experience, what they're going through or how, or how they react as well, but I guess acknowledge the reality of what's happening for them at the time. Like if they if they say something like, "Yeah, things aren't good at the moment, but I'm not ready to talk about it," or "I'm not sure what to say," or "I don't feel comfortable," give them that time, and I guess sit patiently with that person as well. Awesome! Thank you very much, Luke. Um, no Thank you for having me. We couldn't thank you enough for your work that you're doing in the community and helping us out. So good luck for your upcoming projects. And we're hoping that uh, everything goes well with you and your team. Thanks, Lee and Shadi. Cheers. All right. And now we're going to hear from some more of the Melton Dream Big Artist team. Yes. um, And did you guys know that um, Dream Big was started up in Melton in 2014 by the Royal Children's Hospital? um, And it's now been running for over six years. Um, Let's hear some more from this big, multi-talented team. Hello, everyone. It's Kath Meeson here. I'm a local artist with Dream Big and a local Melton resident. Art is amazing for our health because... We can express all the things that we struggle with through art safely. We can express our laments, our joys, our pains, our anger, and everything in between. So I'd just like to say if you're struggling at the moment under COVID conditions, we're going to be having an arts club where you can join us via Dream Big. Keep an eye on the Facebook page, um, Instagram, and also on our YouTube channel and the Dream Big website 
for invitations to come join us for the Arts Club. You can come and do music with me and other Dream Big artists and learn about songwriting. I want to be able to share this gift with you and help you to express yourself and nurture your inner resources and your resilience and making you strong and empowered. All right, Stardust. <laughs> Sometimes, life is just great. You get the things you want, and everything goes according to plan. There are times when life rolls along really well, and it's possible to succeed at keeping a lot of things on the go. But life can also be complex, difficult, messy, overwhelming, and we can't always handle everything that happens. But don't let a setback get you down. It's worth persevering, even if sometimes you need to make things a bit simpler for yourself. Slow down just a little bit. You can still do things well if you keep trying, and don't worry about how a past version of yourself thought things should be going by now. Circumstances change. We adapt. But even still we can't keep up all the time. But we can keep doing our best at the things that matter the most. And sometimes, Sometimes all you can manage is to just be, just exist, just breathe, and that's okay too. It's okay not to be okay, and to need someone to talk to. So don't be afraid to ask for help when times are hard. Who knows, the person you talk to may have just what you need to get you back on your feet again. So that was amazing. We've heard from some really interesting people today. We've heard from artists who described to us how they use their craft um, to serve their mental health and well-being. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess I want to ask you, Shadi, how are you? Are you okay? I'm, I'm very well uh, during the COVID period. What I did was I set up a network of friends. Mm-hmm. And we, all, we all made a promise to each other to continuously check up on each other. So I think that's been my best way to be able to check up on my mates and to make sure that I'm okay. So I'll flick that question back to you, Lydia. Are you okay? Thank you. You know, I actually really, I like that. I like that you've actually created a culture of asking, um, are you okay? That's really, that's really nice. Maybe I should adopt that with my friends too. (laughs) But um, yeah, I think, well, for me, I am okay. Um, it's been a heavy week in terms of just assignments and just responsibilities, but it's it's good. I feel like I've managed to just stay on top of, of it all. Um, but I am okay because, you know, I'm blessed to have um, the support that I need around me. And I just hope that, like you said, we can extend it, like pass that on to um, someone else. So I've definitely taken something away from today and that is to continuously check up on people around me. Um, 
And yeah, I think, you know, we, you and I were looking at a quote that we thought was suitable to kind of end off with. And it was, kindness doesn't cost anything, but its value is beyond measurement to the recipient. Thank you, Lydia, for that amazing quote. And what a way to finish off our show today. Thank you all for tuning in. Also, thank you to the Brimbank Council Neighbourhood House Unit, the Dream Big Project and Headspace. Take care of yourselves. Yeah, thank you guys. Take care of yourselves and we'll catch you soon. See ya.